Hello and welcome to the Midnight Reader. Do you recognize this shirt? It's because I'm batch filming, because I'm a mother now. And this is my hour when the child is out of the house. <laughs> Film all the introductions to the videos. <laughs> For this video, kind of a reading vlog thing, one of the things I've been doing on my maternity leave is I've been reading a giant, giant book. It's called The Book of Basketball by Dave Simmons. I think it's Dave Simmons. Something Simmons. Is Dave Simmons? What the fuck is his name? Bill Simmons. It's Bill Simmons. It's the professionalism. That's why we have this channel. <laughs> but anyways, I've been on maternity leave. My husband recommended a book that he's been trying to get me to read for years. And I have not because it's enormous and it's about basketball. <laughs> I like sports. I am not a sports nut. There were no pro teams in Alaska. The sports I liked were cross country running and cross country skiing, neither of which are ball sports. I've been watching a lot of like 30 for 30 ESPN documentaries with my husband as we've been holding our screaming infant and I've had a lot of fun with it. And I was like, why not? I have a little bit more of a, an understanding of the world of basketball. So I'll read this book. So I am working my way through it. It is like 800 pages. It is a dictionary of the history of sports. And I thought, why don't I also take some recommendations from books from my family? So I asked my mom and dad to also recommend me books. I'm gonna try to get through the three of them in the next like few weeks, few months, whatever. The Book of Basketball is clearly first. I think I am 300 pages into it and that has taken me two months. <laughs> my father recommended me another nonfiction book and that is The Book of Eels by Patrick Svensson, which I think I'm probably gonna really like because I, I love the kind of hyper-focused, learn about one thing nonfiction nature books. My favorite book is currently a book about snails. So that one I'm look I'm really looking forward to. And then I asked my mom to recommend me a book and she recommended a fiction book. Uh, she actually went through a couple and <laughs> she was originally gonna try to get me to read Little Woman and I like vetoed that because I was like, I'm already, I'm already reading like an 800 page book, mom. <laughs> I'm not in a headspace for reading classics right now. I need, I need things that are a little bit you know, so she recommended a kind of like mystery series, I guess, that she enjoyed called The Number One Ladies Detective Agency by Alexander McCall Smith. And I think this is kind of like a cozy mystery series taking place in Africa. That's all I know about it. I'm going to go in pretty blind and I'm going to see how I like the books. It was pretty fun to have my family give me recommendations. So we'll, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> finally happened. I did finish the book of basketball. <laughs> Look at this thing. You don't understand. Look, it's so tiny too. Come on. So I did finish this book. This was my husband's recommendation for me. Hold on. This doesn't seem right. Now it's right. By the way, in case you're wondering, this is Portland Trailblazers jersey. And the jersey I chose was Rudy Fernandez, who I think only played for the Blazers for one or two seasons. I own this jersey because in college, I thought he was the cutest basketball player, which I think sums up my understanding of basketball. <laughs> so this book by Bill Simmons was a long time coming. My husband has been trying to get everybody he knows to read this book for the better part of like a decade. He's been relatively unsuccessful to this point, but I had been watching like 30 for 30 episodes with him on ESPN and I'd been enjoying the history of basketball with him. So I decided that I would finally make his day and read this book. Also, Bill Simmons has been growing on me for a very long time. He does a movie review podcast called The Rewatchables. And my husband puts it on whenever we are in the car and whenever we have had long car rides and we have had many. So Bill Simmons' voice sort of lives rent-free in my head. His writing is very similar to the way he talks. So if anything, just completely engaging for the fact that I can hear Bill Simmons reading this when I'm reading his writing, which is always a wonderful thing when you have a book that has great voice. The Book of Basketball was Bill Simmons' attempt to make a Bible on the history of basketball, history of the sport, the history of the players, as well as trying to create a comprehensive ranking 
of all the players, which is difficult because the rules of basketball have changed significantly throughout the years of the sport. He creates his own pyramid scheme. <laughs> I think it's fair to call it that. He creates a, a pyramid of players and that's how he kind of ranks them in the end. I will say this book was written in like 2010. So basketball has changed a lot in the last decade or so. For example, like three-point shooting is now pretty much how the game is played. Steph Curry was not one of the players that Bill Simmons thought was going to be very important coming in the next decade of basketball. He was wrong about that. He initially was going to, I think, keep updating the book, but basketball changes so much and the way he wrote it would make that kind of impossible. If you want to hear like his thoughts from the last like decade of basketball, he did create a podcast called The Book of Basketball 2.0 and he kind of talks about changes and players and things like that. I'm not the target audience for this book. It definitely has areas of it which are super stats heavy that make it really difficult to read and the humor of it definitely reads like it's from the 2010s. It reminds me of listening to guys talking in college and a lot of the jokes didn't age well particularly the ones about women. It's a product of its time and for the most part I really enjoyed the rest of the humor and the rest of the book. That doesn't mean you will. Not everyone can put aside jokes and comments which would absolutely not fly today. I can appreciate the book for what it was, for when it was written, but I also just like Simmons is writing in this section when he's putting Reggie Miller quite low on his pyramid of greatest basketball players. He started the paragraph with this. If you're from Indiana, take a deep breath before you proceed, then take another one and another. Think happy thoughts. Get yourself into a good place. I'll wait for you. Twiddling my thumbs. Humming happily to myself. You ready? Try not to take the following few paragraphs personally. I have no interest in feuding with Indiana, the same place that gave us Hickory High, David Letterman, Larry Legend, and my hypothetical pyramid. I want you to like this book. Every decision, comment, and argument has been carefully made and thought out in an unbiased way. Even with regards to that Nini Kareem, that's also a thing. He spends the entirety of the book making fun of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He does eventually rank him very high in a super unbiased way, and I think that is why he does it is because he sort of dislikes that he has to so he spends the entire book making fun of him. Please know that I have nothing against Reggie Miller other than his refusal to sell Marv Albert's jokes on TNT. Nothing during his career annoyed me other than the way he flopped to get calls and he wasn't the only one. Even his pansy dance after draining a game winner against Chicago in the 98 Eastern Finals didn't bother me. I liked watching Reggie play. I really did. Which makes what you're about to read so painful. I'll even put it in italics to soften the blow a little. Reggie Miller was the most overrated superstar of the past 30 years. Exhale, people from Indiana. <laughs> Work with me. We're gonna get through this. Did I mention that Breaking Away is one of my favorite sports movies? And the thing about it is then he spends probably the next like 15 pages arguing against his original point, trying to showcase the reasons why people believe that Reggie Miller should be ranked higher. But at the end, he puts this. All great points. Unfortunately, it's my book. <laughs> he makes fun of the fact that every chapter has close to a hundred footnotes in it. And you can't skip the footnotes, by the way. Those are where the bulk of the, the humor and the jokes reside. You must read the footnotes. It's mandatory. You'll be arrested if you don't. Did I like the book? Absolutely. Did I love it? I loved parts of it. The thing is, this book is going to be a five-star read for me because of when I read it. I read this book when my daughter was born and my fond memories of this are getting up at four o'clock in the morning to take care of my screaming baby and when she would finally settle in my arms and sleep on me because that's the only place she would sleep, I would take out my Kindle and I would read the book of basketball and I would highlight funny sections and take little notes and when my husband got up like two hours later, he would crawl onto the pullout couch with me and I would read him jokes from this book. This will always be five stars for me because it's my little family and my husband laughing with absolute glee because the book of basketball is essentially handing Bill Simmons about 20 beers and saying, okay, tell me everything you know about basketball and then realizing you're still in the bar five days later. <laughs> but he's very aware of the fact that he goes on much too long. It's his great love, it's his great passion. I think if you enjoy sports history, you would probably really like this book. It's a super entertaining read. Um, if you like Bill Simmons' humor, his voice really shines through. So for me, it's a five-star read because of when I read it and who I read it with. Books are not always just what's between the pages. Sometimes there's something more. So five stars for the book of basketball. And I am on to reading the book of eels. <laughs> Good 
morning. It's a new day, it's a new week, and I have finished reading The Book of Eels. This book was a recommendation from my dad, although my mother has also read it and loved it a lot. So I could say that this one was probably doubly recommended by my parents. I'm not surprised because it's very much the sort of books that I grew up reading. I read a lot of what my parents read when I was growing up, which was often history books on commodities. There are always books with like single word titles like cod, and salt, ice, and tulip mania, <laughs> which I sort of stopped reading as an adult because when I went to college and all the reading that I was doing was very much like dense and academic and I just didn't crave that sort of book anymore. So it was actually really cool to read something in this genre again. The one thing I will say is that I was expecting a book that was mostly a naturalist book, mostly a book that was about the fun intricacies of eels, right? Because it's called the book of eels. <laughs> so I was expecting more eels. <laughs> but the actual title of this book is The Book of Eels, Our Enduring Fascination with the Most Mysterious Creature in the Natural World by Patrick Svensson. I think if I had paid attention to the full title of this book, it would have met my expectations better, which is that it's less about eels and more about the people fascinated with them by them throughout history. It just wasn't what I was expecting. So this is a book that's translated. It was originally written in Swedish. Things I, I liked the most. I liked learning about eels. I liked learning that all eels breed in the Sargasso Sea, which is like this tiny piece of sea in the middle of the ocean right? It's this little tiny section that has like a lot of seaweed and kelp and stuff and we are pretty sure that that's where they all breed but also we've never seen it happen, right? We've actually like never seen like a adult eel in the Sargasso Sea but we're pretty sure that all eels pretty much on the planet go there to breed. It's a 5,000 mile trek from certain parts of the globe other fun things about eels, they can't be farmed, which was news to me because I just assumed eels were like one of those things that we were just, you know, farming the shit out of. Turns out, no. No, we have no way to farm them, which is one of the reasons why they are disappearing because we only fish them. I also liked there was a lot of emphasis on the mysterious parts of their nature. So the fact that we haven't observed a lot of parts of their life cycle, we've had to intuit it from, from data and years of research is also hindering our ability to help eels. There are also some really fun sections on why eels sort of freak us out as well as how particular religions have felt about eels in the past. Those are really interesting. But the bulk of the book was actually sort of two parts. It was historical figures and their obsession with answering questions about eels. One particular favorite was Sigmund Freud was apparently obsessed in his younger years with trying to find eel testicles. And so he like spent a summer, I think in Italy, just dissecting eels, like constantly just covered in eel drippings, being very sexually frustrated by the women of Italy and also by being unable to find any eel testicles, which is very Freud. <laughs> the other part of the book is mostly a memoir, specifically on the author's relationship with his father. And one of the things that they bonded over throughout his life was fishing for eels. It is definitely, I would say, more memoir and history than it is a naturalist sort of study of eels. I really enjoyed the memoir sections about his dad. Although I will say, if you're expecting this to be kind of a naturalist book, it may trouble you slightly. Very enthusiastic descriptions of gutting and killing eels. <laughs> Like at one point he used the word crucifixion. He really, really got into the descriptions of killing eels <laughs> with his dad, which was sort of odd because sometimes that was juxtaposed with sections on like what the soul of an eel is, <laughs> followed by gutting and beheading of eels. <laughs> Overall, I enjoyed it. It was not like my favorite book I've ever read, so I'm gonna give it a solid four stars. It leaned more into history, which while I find fascinating, my brain has a hard time reading right now because I have a hard time focusing and concentrating on things because I have a newborn and it has turned my brain into a puddle of goop. Nonfiction in general is a little bit more difficult for me to read right now, despite the fact that I really like nonfiction. <laughs> if you're interested in history books that have a memoir through line, also would like to learn some fun facts about eels, you might be interested by this book. Just know there's gonna be some like beheadings of eels. That happens in there. Last, I have the only fiction book on the list, which I'm actually quite excited about, which is the mystery detective series called The Number One Ladies Detective Agency. 
I think. So we're gonna read that one next and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Welcome back! It's a while later! This is so exciting! I've completed the task of reading a book recommended by members of my family! So I finished reading The Number One Ladies Detective Agency by Alexander McCall. And the first thing I'd like to say is that this is not what I thought it was. This is not a cozy mystery. This is a slice of life story which gives you insight into sort of like the everyday lives of locals living in Botswana in about the 1990s. The story follows Ma Ramatswe, who is slightly older. I think she's in her like late 30s or early 40s. Uh, which is kind of great. I love a non 19 year old protagonist. She uses the inheritance from her father's death to set up a business and the business that she chooses is inspired by some of her heroes like Agatha Christie and it's the number one ladies detective agency. And it has kind of like a mystery of the day sort of quality. The mysteries that she's solving are often very small like is my husband cheating on me or my long lost father came to live with me and I kind of don't think he's my dad. Can you find out if he really is? or not but I don't want him to take a paternity test. So a lot of like the mysteries she has to solve she solves with her own like wisdom and wit and guile and honestly just a lot of talking to people. <laughs> I loved her character. The story is very much about like her life growing up in Botswana as well as the country of Botswana itself which is its own character. I did not know a lot about Botswana. The bulk of what I learned about Botswana and the Kalahari Desert I learned from like that episode of Top Gear where they try across Botswana in non four-wheel drive vehicles which was pretty good entertainment wise. I would hesitate to call it educational. <laughs> She's solving these mysteries. There's a couple that are a little bit darker. There's a potentially kidnapped or murdered child. But then there's also ones where like an overbearing father wants to know if his teenage daughter has a boyfriend. She's trying to get paid so she can keep running her little agency. And it's cute. It's really cute. Whenever I picked it up, I felt like it was like sort of fun to fall into this world and this country that I have never lived in. I think it sits in the four, four and a half star range for me. But I do try to remember that the author is a white man from Scotland. I think he did live in Botswana for a while. I think he paints like a really lovely picture of the characters, particularly of Ma Ramatswe. But I think it's always kind of good to, to keep in mind this is a white man writing a black woman's story. A little bit of a grain of salt in there. I thought he did a wonderful job painting a picture of, of everyday Botswana. Um, and I'm sure that the characters in here are reflections of people that he knew. I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was solid entertainment. So those are the three books that I read off my family's recommendations. I recommend you asking your friends and family for recommendations. Have them recommend you a book. All of these were of some interest to me, but not books that I would go out of my way to pick up. So if I hadn't been recommended them, I probably wouldn't have read them. It was a lot of fun. It did take me a while to get through it, but that's because I'm a mood reader and also I'm tired all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> highly recommend. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and being kind. And I will see you all next video. Bye. <laughs>